Uh, my name is Horimoto, and I'm going to uh, make a presentation on this subject. And then um, probably I briefly touched upon this um, historical development of the relationship between the two countries, and at the same time, recent development, particularly from this um, uh, new uh, government uh, in Japan, which Abe did, and what he is thinking about the bilateral relations and so on. And brief, I try to be brief, and then, uh, then afterwards I'd like to uh, enjoy the discussion. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to the uh, Manipal University for inviting me to this uh, very interesting, opportune, and prestigious uh, conference. I'm very delighted to come. All the way from Japan, it takes a lot of time, so. <laughs> now, uh, I have been associating with India more than uh, for, uh, 40 years. And during the, this uh, four decades of my association with uh, India makes change to me. I'm supposed to be a very modest person, very um, security person. But um, by during staying in India, which makes me more outspoken like India. <laughs> like I am in that sense, in that aspect, I am a um, bit Indianized, I should say. Now, um, so I sometimes may sometimes uh, say maybe all God seems saying something like that. Please don't mind. I am also get such kind of experience in the past. Uh, this is uh, today's my uh, presentation. One is uh, historical development of the two countries and uh, what has been to be done from the future, in, from now on. And particularly um, the Prime Minister Abe's on stage in Japanese politics. And my topic, my talks, uh, and the outline of my talk is in the bottom of this um, slide. Oh, oh. It doesn't come out. Oh, come. Uh, my talk is mainly con this, uh, excerpt of this book, uh, the uh, Indo-Japan Relations in Emerging Asia, published recently from the Manohar. The first phase, uh, I should say first phase, uh, the um, 1950s, 1980s, the, um, uh, briefly, I say briefly, political aspect uh, Japan has um, Japan-US alliance, nuclear umbrella, whereas India is non-aligned, and alliance is Soviet Union, and 1974 explosion. And in terms of economic um, regime, open economy and closed economy. So this relationship during this period is, could be called as friendly but incompatible. And which will signify the um, very infrequent uh, mutual visit at the level of Prime Minister. The, from Japan to India, Ikeda was the 1961, and second one was Prime Minister Nakasone. He had visited after 23 years. And India to Japan, Mrs. Indira Gandhi came to Japan in 1969, and then uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi again 82. In such a way, relationship between the two countries are very, very um, friendly, but not so. Uh, in good terms. And then taking this situation, particularly in during the uh, Cold War period, there is um, kind of narratives prevailing in Japan. Particular one is Professor Sato's uh, remarks. Japan's policy to India, it's uh, put it very simple way, derivative. What I mean to say by uh, derivative is Meaning, for, meaning of India for Japan could be understood in relation to China, Korean Peninsula, and the Southeast Asia countries. Indo-Japan Indo -Japan relations have been characterized by derivative natures, pejoratively speaking. One side of Japan's policy is expediency. Japan cope with others by its own convenience rather than others' standpoint. Others means India's standpoint. This is one narrative, and probably what he said in his remarks will probably be very correct. And second one is Dr. Satri Mai. He is the director, at the moment, director of 
uh, East West Center, Washington. And he said, Japan was undoubtedly influenced by U.S. policies and consequently reduced its own ties to India. The India in turn responded by a basically writing off Japan as an American surrogate in Asia. And Japan's close relations with the United States and Rata's troubled relations with India have strongly shaped Japan-India encounter a theme that persists to this day. And he was um, mentioning that um, Japan is a kind of the prayer of the United States in Asia. And there is a very interesting phenomenon taking place. And no one, not all of them, know very well the bottom line. Yes. Uh, the Prime Minister Mori came to India, August 2000. And he's getting a prior note from the United States. And he was clearly said so in his uh, LDP, Liberal Democratic Party's Mansri Morgan. And he was saying, uh, he gave a very de detailed uh, background what he has done. Because when he wanted to say that uh, he wanted to minister of foreign affairs, I'd like to visit India. And then what has started was how to get a negotiation, how to get accommodation, and so on, from the uh, United States and so on. So in such a way, it's, um, Japan's policy toward India is not so independent and always thinking in terms of U.S. influence, U.S. Uh, connection, and so on. And probably this comment, these two relatives, will be a correct one, but I should say this one. The, this is the first phase, and now 1990, uh, 1990s onward, this, uh, the second phase has started. I mean to say, these discourses, to, to, uh, discourse, these discourses not applicable now. Around 2005, I metaphor forces occurred with dominating perception and interest. And then there may be uh, some uh, basic factors, a uh, few historical baggages. Uh, geographic distances and no threat perception mutually, and then democracy. Uh, I, uh, two days back, I came from here to uh, New Delhi, 6,000 kilometers. 6,000 kilometers is very far away. And moreover, you, you may, uh, you of course, all, you are all expert on international relations, and then uh, there tend to be a situation the neighbors can easily get quarreled. But in case of India and Japan, it's far away, and there's no chance to get quarreled, get to fight. So in such a way, the best point would be that we don't have any animosity toward each other. And then start the recent uh, factors, uh, China's emergence, China's emergence. And then last year, there's a very interesting um, report came out Non-Alignment 2.0, and published by Center for Policy Research. And then I minutely read this report, along with other 40 um, comment comments and so on. And when I checked up, how many, uh, how, which country are most frequently mentioned in this report, I was struck, China. And then in country-wise, 113 occasions in this report, China or Chinese has been deferred. And second one is Pakistan, came 100. And the United States is 35. And then comes Japan, 6. So in such a way, you know, how this uh, Jap uh, India's perception throughout uh, surrounding uh, countries is molded. So number one is China's emergence. This is for both Japan and India also. This is a kind of big threat big challenge, how to cope with a new situation arising in the Asian region. And the second one, particularly for in Japan, there is an anti-Japan upheavals in China, 2004 to 2005. These are the photos taking place in uh, China mainland. And then this um, situation, these happenings, made Japanese quite very fearful about what is happening to in China. And traditionally speaking, 
uh, this um, Japanese has a very uh, kind of uh, close affinity toward China. And then most of the public opinion survey shows the Japanese have a great um, respect, great love, and in terms of food, in terms of letters and everything. But because of this incident, uh, the Japanese um, impressions, perceptions, towards suddenly go down. And then this um, anti-Japanese upheavals, not only this time, after this uh, 2004 to 5, there are several such occasions of occurred. And this makes Paka, the uh, Japanese feeling towards China. And even today, even these days, opi public opinion survey is showing very, very low um, in, um, perceptions toward China. And the second factor is this one, uh, risk diversification for Japan. This is uh, the main Japanese investment, main Japanese trade with other countries, uh, China. And then the United States has been overtaken by China. And then most of the big companies, any commercial firms, just going to bandwagoning to China. But uh, this um, upheavals has changed Japanese enterprise, I mean, entrepreneurs' mindset to other way around. This is needless to say, anyone knows about uh, first iron chain and second iron chain. And then they are this, uh, in this concept, this will be completed by 2050, and then comes Indian Ocean. So in such a way, this threat perception mutually is gradually growing. And then that's why in this way, this uh, chronology of recent development is this. Uh, 2005, 2000, Prime Minister Mori's visit, Bajpai's visit, and then Director General's meeting, and uh, Japan, India as a top recipient of Japanese ODA, and then visit, alternate visit by two prime ministers, declaration of global strategic partnership. Uh, Japan has desiphonated India and Pakistan. This is very important from the Japanese perspective. In the past, Japan has always associated with India and Pakistan. When there's a prime minister kept, uh, visit to South Asian countries, this is always together with India and Pakistan. And from this year onward, the Japanese government, MOFA, Minister of Foreign Affairs, stopped practicing that uh, kind of tradition. And then comes a joint uh, statement on security cooperation, and two, and two plus two meeting, and foreign secretary level meeting, and comprehensive economic partnership agreement. So in such a way, situation of, between the two countries has completely changed. And this you can show by this um, statistics. The VIP's uh, mutual visit, 1980s, 84, and this is very few. And, 90, and me, during 90, 90s, very few. 90, 2000 onward, gradually going up, and 2005 onward, suddenly jumping. Big um, sort of mutual visit between the two countries. And this is not only VIP's, but also uh, direct investment in India. Again, 2005 is some sort of watershed in terms of investment. The Professor Sato will make a presentation later, but I've said it briefly. So in such a way, this um, investment in, Jap in India from Japan is suddenly going up year by year. And then finally comes bilateral trade. That is also jumping up gradually, and 2005 is a kind of year mark for the greater uh, volume of bilateral trade. So in such a way, the bilateral relations is going up. And there's another interesting aspect also, Japan, India's response to uh, East Asian summit. And the first East Asian summit has been taken place in 2005. And there's a tussle between India, Japan and China. Japan promotes ASEAN plus three, uh, CJ Kim in China, Japan, Korea, India, New Zealand, Australia, 16 countries. And China, ASEAN plus three, China, Japan, Korea, 
that is 13 countries. There is a divergent view between composition of this uh, ASEAN uh, EAS meeting. And then you just note this one. 2005, Japan and China admitted as an observer. And then what happened was Japanese side conveyed its decision to support India's a membership in East Asian Summit. And the Indian side expressed its appreci appreciation for the Japanese support. This is, um, behind the story, there's a, some kind of reciprocal move. Japan will be admitted as an observer in uh, SARC, and then the India will be admitted. It's a part of EAS uh, compositions. So to be a member of EAS is a big step forward for the, uh, India's East policy. So this is a sort of uh, this uh, first part of my presentation. The following is my second uh, part of my presentation. The what has been done? And let me first check up what has happened in past two years. The imperial visit to India start November 30th till the December. And then uh, emperor is, uh, was just the second time for himself. He has been visited uh, uh, India, New Delhi, uh, 2006, December 2006, 60s, 1960s. And he laid a foundation stone at the IIC, Indian International Center. And when you go to the main entrance of IIC, just below this, uh, just before the door of the entrance, you see the break. It is mentioned, Princess Akihito San and so laid a foundation stone in this building. This, you can see. So this is the second time, second visit for him to come to India. And then, um, uh, this, um, this is a probably a uh, sort of big turning point for the mutual relations. I am saying to the Japanese media, you should start moving, you should start creating a big program, and then otherwise, so that you can have, you know, renowned within that uh, TV company or TV something, and you will get good promoted, something like that. And then uh, second one is uh, defense and economic relations. The, Defense Corporation, uh, Japan's probable export of US-2 uh, flying boat. And this Samaji Dara-san will make a point later, probably. And then uh, second naval exercise by end of this year. This is the first one was June 2012. And nuclear cooperation negotiation will start. And there is so many divergent views on the, um, this uh, nuclear cooperation. But according to my impression, this will get through. But uh, in order to show the Japanese people at large, government tried to pacify the what has happened in Fukushima and others. It takes a little bit of time. But in the end, the, I'm sure that the government, particularly our government, is going to proceed with this idea. <coughs> and another one is currency swap. The uh, currency swap has been increased 3 billion, uh, 3 billion to 50 billion. So in such a way, bilateral relationship in terms of defense and in terms of economy is mushrooming. Now, in this connection, there is uh, Prime Minister Mamahan Shin's remarks. And he gave an interview to the Japanese media just before uh, visiting to Japan. But finally, it has been canceled because of the uh, dissolution of the house of diet in Japan. And he said to the Japanese media, Japan and India has to work with China to ensure that peaceful rise of China takes place in a manner which will be conducive to the Asian security and Asian prosperity. That's what he said. He's, um, you know, very, um, very cautiously speaking about what should be, what two countries should do. And there's a very interesting inside story. At, um, Mama, Prime Minister Mao Shin came to Japan in uh, 2010. And then at that time, Prime Minister of Japan was Ms. Prime Minister Kam. He did, asked uh, Prime Minister Ma Mahasin, what is the secret? What is the secret for the Ch uh, India to deal with China quite nicely? And then uh, Prime Minister Sin said three points. One is um, engagement. And the second one is the deep study. And thirdly, a lot of patience. <laughs> so in such a way, you know, this, uh, Japan, India is also how it's managed to cope with the lies of China. 
Now, in the Japanese side, this uh, Prime Minister Abe came back on political stage. And then he was the Prime Minister 2006 and 2007. At that time, he was 25 years, 20, 53 years old, youngest Prime Minister after the Second World War. But at that time, his cabinet has been criticized, just like Horowitz's cabinet or close friend cabinet. Only he assembled cabinet ministers consisting of very close friends only, regardless of what he has done, what she can do, regardless of the abilities. And moreover, because of so many pressures to his um, political management, he got poor health and finally gave up the prime ministership. So at that time, this uh, Japanese media saying he was too young to be a prime minister, something like that. Lots of uh, criticism against him. And the second one is, the uh, last December, there was a lower house election. The uh, LDP, Liberal Democratic Party, has got a resounding, landslide victory. And then, because of that, the uh, Abe got a second term as a prime minister. That is, six years later. Second, and the second, state, second statement to hold prime ministership is first occasion. And I am saying that, um, you know, in almost all the countries, with a lapse of six years, is a big time, and not easy to be, become a prime minister again. But Abe's case, he has experienced the prime ministership and lots of experiences. And then because of the second term as a prime minister, he has doing quite well. Like uh, Abe, huh? oh, 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 oh. Shortage time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, um, he was very lucky. Uh, the, he has Abenomics is doing well, and Ori Games is coming 2002. So in such a way, he is very happy. And then uh, the overall thinking about uh, Abe's thinking is the restore the economy, fresh monetary policy, fresh fiscal policy, U.S. investment, and then reinvestment, national security structure, national security council, national security strategy, increment of the national defense budget. In such a way, he has uh, the, uh, promoting new ideas. This is done at the um, Hudson Institute, September 25. I was thinking, particularly in India, India as a really important country. It is no longer Japan-India relationship will outdo Japan-US, Japan-China within 10 years. And this is what he said in his um, book. And then at the moment he was, he had this idea for a new Asian alliance of democracy as a counterweight to growing China's influence in the field of economics and military powers and gaining the crucial partnership in Asia, that is India. This is just, uh, sorry, sorry to, 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 to spend some more time. This is a kind of intermission. I just, um, my talk will be sometimes get bored, so I just play the intermission. Uh, the, um, at the moment, Abe's ab approval rate is 70%. This, that, this approval rate is not going down. Rather, it is growing up. But all what he is doing is not necessarily supported. And in, mainly, his support is toward the economic policy and partly um, foreign policy. And particularly, Indian policy will be okay. But there is a very uh, interesting uh, uh, animation movie, Wind Rises, Kaze Tachinu. This has been published uh, this um, July, a Japanese animated historical uh, fantasy film, uh, Hayato, Hayao Miyazaki, this person. And he has got uh, so many international awards and so on. And then this um, uh, movie, 8 million viewers already, and fetched one, uh, 16 billion rupees. And it's a resounding success for his uh, movies. And the content of this movie is the, uh, there's a designer, plane designer. He made Zero Fighter. And at that time, it's a carry of uh, 500 meter, uh, kilometers per hour. Fastest, fastest on the jet fight and proper lighter, fighter at that time. And then uh, he has created this uh, Zero Fighter. And based upon his, what he has done, he has created these movies. And then 
According to, um, he, he is a weapon lover, he's a strange person, weapon lover, but pacifist, environmentalist, dead against army and nuclear development, that's all. But he, so he is a kind of spirit personalities, and he, but he's still interested in making film on these um, jet fighters. What I mean to say is, the Japanese at large, probably supporting Abe's uh, government, Abe's what he is promoting to give the impetus to the Japanese economy. But at the same time, some people, some other people may feel something um, very awkward about extending military uh, hardship, military alliance, and something like that. So this I would like to say, uh, just not all the Japanese are dead, it's all set for the, you know, military adventurist or something like that. This is not true. Now, coming to the final point. I mean to say, go beyond the bilateral relationship. And I mean to say for the public property and public good. And two countries are the major powers of Asia. And I am sure that the relationship between two countries will grow more and more. This is definite, quite definite, for the time being. But uh, maybe 10 years or 15 years, something like that. After that, India may grow much larger. Then at that moment, India will not require Japan's existence, I don't know. Now that, uh, now would be the opportune time for Japan and India to look forward to future to consider their bilateral relationship as a public property and not simply to promote bilateral benefits as a private uh, property, but public property which would render service. And for creating uh, some kind of institutional mechanism institutionalizing a security mechanism, something like uh, regional security mechanism for Asia's prosperity, peace, and stability. And more concretely, strategic cooperation between in Japan and uh, India should be so oriented as to create an Asian environment in which, this is important, in which China would find it difficult to become a hegemon and would instead accept cooperation for regional framework. This is what I mean to say. I want to say most in my presentation. And then something like, uh, uh, I, I cut it as a part. So thank you very much. We just heard uh, uh, Professor Takeo.